Are you doing a conditioning workout prior to your strength training workout and calling it warm-up? Maybe. Lots of people think it's necessary to get some degree of exhausted before every workout so that they can more effectively perform the workout. Now let's examine this idea because it wastes a lot of time and potential progress. The purpose of warm-up is to prepare the body for the workout. That's all it's for. Conditioning day is a separate issue and a separate activity. And fatigue from unnecessary warm-up is obviously detrimental to the training effect of the subsequent workout. Effective warm-up prepares both the tissue, raising the temperature of the components of the kinetic chain to be used in the workout if they're cold, and the movement pattern involved in the workout. Both of these aspects of warm-up must be considered in the context of the workout in question. Proper warm-up therefore depends on the nature of the workout for which you are preparing. If you're going to jog five miles, sprint 200 meters for 10 reps, or squat, press, and deadlift, it is reasonable to conclude that each of these different types of workout require a different warm-up. Jogging may well require an elevation of body temperature if the jog takes place outdoors, but the movement pattern involved in jogging is short, repetitive, and not very complicated. In contrast, sprinting is more technical. If trained outdoors, it may also require some temperature elevation, but it involves a longer range of motion, a timed burst of acceleration, and a shorter duration that permits fewer errors in execution. So it's not surprising that jogging and sprinting require different approaches to warm up. Jogging gets warmed up by putting on your sweats, if it's cold, and starting to jog, slowly at first, and then up to pace after a few hundred yards. Sprinting, depending on the event, may require some specific stretching, some practice of starts off the blocks, and a few float outs before the first effort at 75%. Anything more extensive and nonspecific to these workouts is a waste of time. Squats require that you do some position stretching for the bottom of the movement, a few light squats, and an appropriate progression in weight from the empty bar up to the work sets using proper technique. And that is all. No jumping around in the floor, no hundred air squats, no goofy walking, no stretching other than assuming the bottom position a couple of times. Just get warm under the bar, add weight, and squat. There is no evidence in either the literature or in the objective evaluated experience of coaches or lifters that 30 minutes of stretching before a barbell workout is anything other than a detrimental waste of time. We've demonstrated for the past 10 years that below parallel squats are not dependent on flexibility, but rather correct positioning of the stance, knees, and back angle. The bottom position stretch I mentioned is not really a stretch in the sense that the mobility people use the term, but a practice of the position to be assumed at the bottom before you start squatting. In fact, the vast majority of the studies on the subject show a decrease in power development if stretching is performed prior to the movement being tested. Stretching does not prevent injuries, and it does not increase performance. The full range of motion barbell exercises constitute their own stretch, and if you are already flexible enough to execute the barbell movements over their full and effective range of motion, and if you're not engaged in a sport that challenges your existing range of motion during the movement patterns used in the sport, then you are sufficiently flexible already to train without stretching. Stretching need not, and in fact should not, be a part of the warm-up because it's a waste of your time. Training time is valuable. Paying for a coach to supervise an unnecessary half hour of pointless warm-up is one of the more obvious examples, but so is personal time spent away from work or family in the gym or in the track. Wasting that time is costly. 
and doing so simply because you've heard it is important reflects badly on your credulity. Think about it. You may have become accustomed to a long warm-up prior to your workout. You may even enjoy it a little bit, but it's just not necessary. Next time you train, experiment with how little warm-up you can do to adequately prepare for the workout. Effective training, not unnecessary warm-up, provides the benefits of productive programming.